Hey everyone. Uh, I started playing with radial UVs and UV distortion a little bit and I made a new funny material function. I just wanted to show it off. Uh, this is a normal texture as you can see. Uh, let me plug in the material function. There you go. Now it's a radial UV. You can do quite a few funny things with it. Uh, let's go to wing planner speed here. I can make it rotate faster, down clockwise, yada yada, of course. And also move it inwards, which is better visible if I disable this. There we go. Now I'm going to make it a bit slower there. Now, additionally, I can also change the normal map strength, or any noise texture actually. I tend to use normal maps because those give me reliant results. As you can see, all the way up to one, I can go even farther, but that's actually just more static for some weird TV or whatever. That's not what I want. Often in the lower scale, it looks better. There's just a little bit of distortion going on there. And let me apply that on another texture for some cool effects. There. Now, as you can see, normally this is just a straight texture. Uh, with this, you get all kinds of weird wobby effects. And again, you can change all kinds. You can do all kinds of cool things with these. Um, additionally, uh, what's a bad, good texture? I think this one in the red channel will be a good example. There, now you have a nice, you have a nice ring. And let's tweak the noise map size and that kind of stuff. Now the noise map is at a minimum of 0.01. I clamp that just in case, and you can also increase it. Now it's a bit more effective. Etc. Etc. Let's go up to 0.5 or so. It should be fine for most things. Uh, additionally, I can also change the panel speed. And there. Now it's moving way faster, as you can see. That's quite slow. This could be nice for a water ring, especially if it's panning the other way. So. You could clamp it and you might get some cool results with it. Let's actually try that and save before because I don't know what the result will be. Um, I think I need to clamp it on the x-axis, I'm not entirely sure. Let's try the y-axis. Why are you not working? Wrap. Clamp. Today is not the day it wants to work. Fine. Okay, never mind. We have to refresh, of course. Uh, clamp this one. Oh, not mirror. Clamp. The mirror might give cool effects as well. Uh, wrap this one. Okay, not doing much. It might be different for one of the other colors. Uh, that one is entirely not visible now. And uh, this one gives this kind of effect. Okay. Uh, additionally, if you have like a cool cloud texture, you can get some cool results with that as well, as you can see. Let me lower the noise a little bit more. Okay, and uh, I have a few other things that are fun to play with. Texture coordination. Might give a seam depending on the sizes you give it, but let's go with 0 0.1. 0 0.5 might work, no. One works, two works. All numbers seem to work properly because else you see the seam. 
and I have this infant galaxy expanding. Um, can go quite far with this. Minus 10. And you can do the same thing with this. And quite a few cool things with it, but also 0 0.1. Five, one, etc., etc. And then there is this, which is just me goofing off a little bit. Normally, I only use it for like a regular texture UVs. You can play around with it a little bit. In case you want to do something funny or funky. There you can change the UV channel of course. This happens because the mesh I'm using briefly doesn't have a second UV channel, so keep that in mind. Yeah, I think that's all I can show with this. We'll go back to the first UV channel there. Now, if you have a, like a radial, radiant, radial thingy, where are you? Who's radial gradients? There. It's almost the same as a regular radial. I just added a few features that I found useful for me. And let's multiply that with this and that one. You can get effects like this. They're nicely cut up. And let's add a color to this as well. Punches there. Oh, let's multiply that with a gazillion. Well, not a gazillion, but 10. You can get all these kinds of cool effects. Now let's go even further and just add a U because I like U shifts. I play around with them a lot. Let's imagine that this is a texture. There you go. And uh, let's add a time sign. The low time sign is just literally the time note and sign note as I show you here. Sign remapped with a few inputs done. I just use them because I'm lazy. And there we go. Voop. You can do all kinds of fun things with this. There. Or even just. But this won't give you any colors, of course. Oh, uh, now you get an idea of what I'm doing with funny material functions. You could even go as far as get a regular ring texture. Let me see if I actually have one. I should have one. Uh, let's use the arrow ring. And multiply that by two. It should give me a circle. There we go. Multiply that with this. Oh. And you'll only have it inside this ring. And that can give you quite a full, cool effects for particles and other things. Plug this one in again. Boom, boom. Yeah, Lewis likes it. Now, I won't show you the innards of this one yet. I might do it on a later date. I like to keep them a secret for now. Uh, oh, here, I forgot to unclamp uh, this and actually show you some other few little things. And this one, this is the regular red channel. This is just a horizontal bar. Now we have the green channel, which is just a few dots. And the blue channel is just a noise texture. Which can give you quite a few cool effects as well. The sphere synonymous is also very cool. Anyways, that's it. I'm not going to spend any more of your time. Alrighty, take care.